everyone. Welcome to Something to Talk About. This, uh, this time around, uh, we are eating other foods that we haven't had on the set before. This one is the chorizo fried rice with the over easy egg. Go-to meal all the time. When, when in doubt, that's what you get. Uh, we are here along with Bobby Alvarez to talk a bit about something new and hip and happening down in the Tumon area. It's the Tumon Night Market. Yeah, exactly. Yay. Yeah. It's so good to see you, my friend. How are Patty, you? Good it's to see so you. good Thank to see you. you. Now, let's yeah. talk about the, this uh, venture. What, what is your involvement in it first? I am the business developer for the Tumon Night Market. It's Guam's newest and latest night market. Mm -hmm. So you can look at the model like... Chamorro Village every Wednesday night. Right. Right. A lot of tourists go there. A lot of locals go there, and which is very successful. And the tourists come to Guam for three or four days, right? Right. So a lot of them don't get a chance to go to the Chamorro Village. Mm -hmm. So now there's another venue provided them, so we can have a choice between yeah. the two. Yeah. Right? And and it's so convenient because it's right there. Yes, in exactly. Tumon. Exactly. Uh, tell me, tell me, where's the location? It's right there at the Epal Beach on the GVB Pro side. As you okay. drive into the parking lot, you're going to come to a metal gate. Mm -hmm. We're inside that parking lot there. Okay. So you you take up that whole parking yes, lot area? Yes, bo both sides, yes. Oh, wow. So th the the idea for the Tumon Night Market came from what? Was it just sort of a, because you saw the, Ch the, the Chamor Village Market and then Mingilau, they have their own night market every Thursday night, right? Right. So yeah. actually what, how this, this uh, became an idea was somebody asked me a question I'm gonna ask you the same question okay um, we're having coffee one day and somebody asked me Bobby how many locally owned businesses do you know are in Tumon mm -hmm. so I want to ask you that how many can you name uh, not many I know okay. that Proa is definitely one yeah, of that them, was my first answer yeah, was Proa yeah. and then after well, that you got, got the Hafaloa and you've got right, a couple right. of them that, that have and, crept up and I couldn't name more than three or four yeah, yeah. and then the next question in my mind was why is that mm -hmm. and obviously Tumon is, is very expensive, mm -hmm. and a lot of these small local businesses don't have the financial capabilities to sustain themselves in Tumon. So what happens is not by choice, they get excluded. Well, they're, they're, they're taking a risk. Right, so, right. so when you, you get in there, you either got to make that money or you're not going to survive. Yeah, it, but they take a big risk to get there. That's exactly the, the reason, and a lot of them can't sustain themselves yeah. uh, to be there too long. So what happens is... They, they won't be able to participate in Guam's main industry, which is tourism, mm -hmm. to participate in Tumon because they just can't afford it. It's, it's really expensive. So what happens in retrospect is they have to go out to other venues and find a way to get involved in tourism, which is a night market in, in Chamorro Village mm -hmm. or the other night markets. So when I thought about it, I said, you know, that's a dilemma. I mean, that, that's something that, that could be fixed. How can we get more local businesses to participate and be in Tumon? And the night market became an idea, and I said, wow, that's a great idea. It's a, it's a great way to open the doors for these small local businesses mm -hmm. to come into Tumon and have a home at least once a week, right? Right. And now I can tell you we have about close to 50 locally owned small businesses that are operating business in Tumon. Did they, their, their pop-ups for that one event, I mean, on Fridays, they just they don't do any business other where, anywhere else. They, they just come up on, on that night. Yes, a lot of them do business at Chamorro Village on Wednesday. Some of them are participants oh, of the Manila Night Market too as well. Okay. And so they're all looking for more venues. So many people were, were very pleased to know that there's another venue they can participate mm -hmm. in. We, we, we set up the whole place for them. We have canopy set up with the lighting and we have power down there. So what they do is they just come in basically when they become a vendors, move their things in, unload, go and find parking, come back. They don't have to deal with the canopies or the lights or anything like that. Wow. We make it user friendly. 50 yeah. vendors have signed up. That's pretty good. Close to 50. But Close this is 50. not the first time that you've done the, the night market. You've done it. You've done it other nights, haven't you? Right. We were involved with the uh, with GVB in the Summer Beach Fest. Yeah. And we meshed our events together, and uh, that was called the Summer Beach Fest, which was, which ran from July 16th all the way to August 28th. Okay. Yeah. And wow. we were we were in that in that event, and so it was really successful. Very good event. I mean, that's a built-in audience. I mean, you have a built-in consumer the moment you set up a tent down in Tumon, yes, yes, right? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. And these things are really very, really popular. What, what, what is the big attraction, though? Is it, you know, proximity, obviously, to the, to the foot traffic? There's that. Yes, exactly. And you know what? When we thought about the concept of doing this, we, we really thought it out pretty well because we built this on the philosophy that if the tourists can find their way to a mm -hmm. for the Wednesday night markets, yeah. VIA, trolley, bus, taxi, rent-a-car. Hey, I've seen Russian tourists walking from Sheraton 
down to the Chamorro Village. That's exactly. for a lot of people walking like that isn't even a big deal. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But they're, they're used to it. Yeah, they're used to it. I mean, in their own countries, that's what they, if you yeah. want to get anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike Chamorros, you tell them to go to the store and it's only 100 oh, yards Lord away. They're going to get a car. I'm going to drive my car from here down <laughs> to the post office. That's what I'm going to do. But yes. Okay. So, so just just a geographic location where we're yeah. at is, is a plus because now it's very accessible for the tourists. Yeah. They're going to find their way to us. Yeah. So who are you geared toward? Is it is it the tourist? And I'm sure that the local vendors are also looking for, you know, the... Yes, tourists are a big part of our demographic, but we've seen an increase with the military crowd because mm -hmm. I didn't know this until recently. There are a lot of military people living in Tumon, renting. Oh, yeah. Man, the... and, and, and they started walking over in our local crowd. The attendance is great. Mm -hmm. um, during the Summer Beach Fest, on Saturdays especially, we've drawn crowds of thousands, wow. three or four thousand, you know, and we anticipate it's just going to grow as it starts to evolve. So we're in the evolving process right, right. now. Yeah. Um, so the, the hours of operation are normally when then? Do so you start off at like? Saturday from 5 p.m. all the way to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. And it's only that one night on, yes. on the Saturday? Only one night on Saturdays. For a five-hour period? Right. Wow. So when when people um, go down to the uh, to the night markets, especially the tourists, what do you see that they are looking for? A lot of them are looking for food, um, ah, and you know what yeah. the thing is, they're looking for food that's really priced very well. Mm -hmm. um, out of you know just just by just observing, you know, a lot of them are very pleased to have an option to come out and spend ten, twelve bucks, as opposed to eating somewhere else in two months, going to cost them twenty, thirty, forty mm -hmm. bucks, right? Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it's about uh, looking for that customer that is looking for a good bargain. Yeah. And so the night, par the night market provides that, that venue for them to come down. And so a lot of them are looking for food. Um, a lot of them are looking for gifts. Uh, Christmas is coming around. So we have a whole array of vendors that have so many trinkets, homemade arts and crafts, wow. hats, t-shirts, yeah. apparels. Yeah. Is, is it hard to get in? Or? Not at all. Not at all. We have parking on both sides. You, well, you, I mean for a vendor, sorry. For a vendor. Okay, I'm sorry. For a vendor to get in, uh, we are running out of slots quickly. So if anybody wants to become a vendor, they can visit the Tumon Night, Club, Night Market website or the GVB website. You'll see my name. It's uh, Bobby Alvarez, 487-2288. Okay. If you want to become a vendor, you can call me. And we can either give you a spot or we can get you on a waiting list. Mm -hmm. I think that the interesting thing is that a lot of people that are starting up businesses are using this as sort of a, a, a you know, a, a test to determine what the reaction of consumers are to their products. Um, uh, is there anything in there that's unique? The products that are the unique or? Yes, we are. We have, we, we just picked up a vendor that does hand painted ornaments for Christmas trees. Uh -huh. And I saw her products yesterday and she had light bulbs and she was, painting pictures of different scenes on Guam, like, for example, Bear Rock, Two Lovers Point. Um, and they're just regular bulbs? The Guam she... flag. Oh, and yeah. And the Guam flag is the one that sells the most, according to her. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know... Yeah, Very I... unique product, yeah. yeah. Homemade. Okay. Her and her, I believe she sits there with her mom and they paint it. And they're doing really well. Wow. So a startup business that needs some kind of introduction into the community is a place that you would probably want to, is a business that would probably want to start up. Exactly, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to take a break here, uh, but when we come back, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the expansion. You know, where something like this goes. Okay. Because it, it, it would seem to me that setting up, the, you know, setting up these canopies every week is probably going to be tiresome after a while. It is. It, 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 it's work, and you know, I think everybody works hard at some point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. But it's a lot of work for one day for five hours, yes, is what it I'm is. saying. And it is. It would seem to me that ultimately you would probably want to find some kind of more permanent structure, perhaps. That uh, Yes, yeah. that'll be great. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then the growing trend of people that are seeking, you know, food and activity in a really kind of organic way, in, in food truck service. Right. People be cooking right out of their own kitchens and bringing stuff and... That sort of thing. We'll, we'll talk about that, okay. if you don't mind, in the expansion. And then I also want to pick your brain about entertainment on Guam. You know, oh, that's great. another area, because he's also he's also an entertainer. He plays uh, around the island, and specifically in one place now. But we'll talk all about that. We have Bobby Alvarez. We're talking about uh, the Tumon Night Market and stuff. We'll be right back.
Welcome back with Bobby Alvarez talking about the, the, the it's relatively new, the Tumon Night Market. Um, it's it's a popular thing these days. Right. right. Uh, and, and anywhere you, you go in a, a lot of communities, especially in California, in those communities, you'll mm -hmm. find these sort of markets where locals can sell their wares and, and, and their produce right. and fruits and, and things like that. This is a little bit of a different thing. Whatever they bring in is what they sell for that time. Do you do much preparing of, like for example, the food items? Do you do preparation of food there? Uh, most of the vendors that do food have what they call a commissary, and it's by public health regulations. And they do most of the preparing, like the marination, there at the at their commissary, at their their inspectable kitchen, as mm -hmm. public health says. They can bring that food chilled to the night market and start cooking it there. Then there is a lot of preparation. Um, more than you know, I mean, aside from the mm -hmm. canopies and the lighting, the electrical part, the electrical part is pretty um, Intense. intensive sometimes because... You gotta, what are you, who are you plugging into, GVB? Well, we, we had, no, we had uh, generators in the beginning, but now we've, we've just moved towards, we have our own meter down there now oh. with GPA, so now we're moving into island power. And of course, we, we always try to remain compliant with G, the Guam Fire Department to make sure that we're not putting anybody in danger down there mm -hmm. with, with the electrical parts and you know, gases and, and, and generators. So we, we're moved to that, that area right now and we're doing really well. Um, but preparation is pretty much the headache of it all. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we start setting up on Thursday to operate on Saturday. Yeah. So a lot of things go on, like the sponsors' uh, booths, the sponsors' banners, everything wants to be put in a certain place, mm -hmm. right? Just to make it look festive. So it's a lot of work, yes. Yeah. Do, do you advertise like in the hotels to let them know that there's something happening down there at Ebal? We will be. We are in the works for doing that. Um, I think one of the things is some of the hotels don't want their guests to leave and come to us, right? Well, of course, they want to yeah. feed them at their at the exactly. hotel. So a lot of them are reluctant, but we're okay with that. We understand. Well, I mean, it's not going to be. It's not like it's going to be hard to miss either. I mean, you know, it's yeah. a, you know, you see something happening. Is there music going also, and that people would know? Yes, to be we are. We we're going to have music, live local bands every Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have a stage there, so people can come and watch the bands too, as well as uh, cultural dancers. Why are you guys just in the parking lot and not in the actual park? Because for, for one reason, um, being in the actual grass area, when it rains, it becomes very muddy mm. and very uncomfortable. Uh, number two, we can't hammer any stakes down there because that is a historic burial site. So you have to get a permit and they, they kind of um, encourage you not to do that. Mm -hmm. They discourage you from hammering any stakes in the ground. So for those reasons, we, we wanted to respect parks and recs and um, with their with their regulations, so we we saw the parking lot as a very good area because if it rains, it's yeah. it's clean, mm. and you can push a stroller in there. Right. So um, it, yeah. it's 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 really good. It's so I guess that's that that leads us to the question. I mean, every and anyone who's doing business on a you know in a temporary site is probably going to try to figure out a way to find a permanent site. Right, what are you right. doing with that? Are you looking for a permanent site? Um, at this point, um, no. At this point, uh, that is our permanent site. Mm. So uh, with, if we do expand in any way, we still have room to do other things. We have, we have contingency in place. We can utilize the actual pavilion for more vendors if we need to, or even that okay. road there, yes. So you, do you have to rent that property from, from GovGuam? Do you have to like, get permitting and you have a fee? Yes, we have a permit. We have an annual permit with that. And um, it's something similar to what Larry Kasparauer has. He has, a, he has an annual permit down at um, Lupang. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the park there, he leases out from Parks and Recs. And um, he gets that, he's had the thing for 30 years. Uh, I see. So it's some, I think they use it for the jet ski biz. I'm not sure exactly of the details. Right, right, but, right. but we're in the same categories that we rent out the park. Um, we get it for every Saturday. Mm -hmm. And the only way you actually um, would... would would lose the permit is if you come back and say, hey, you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore. You have to surrender it or just, you have huh. to, yeah, you're the only so one So you've got a standing date on their calendar, so they can't really do anything in the park on a Saturday. Yes, but, you. but yes, you know, we, we, we went in there knowing that there are other events that would be there, like, say, the Micronesian Island Fair mm -hmm. and the Japan Festival. And with, with consideration to that, right, we want to show respect to them. So if they're operating on that day, and they do not need uh, the night market services or the vendors, then we can opt to close down or we can opt to support them if they ask us to. But you know, normally we'll show respect and close down for that mm. evening. Yeah, just to let a lot of competition run. for, yeah. Yeah, because it's not gonna be, there's not 
going to be many times where they're going to close down the park on Saturday. It's uh -huh. just a few times a year. Yeah. And we're, we're going to work with them and, and pass over the respect and say, yeah, we can work with you or we can just step aside, let you do your thing, and we'll continue on the next Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, the, the availability of food trucks. I mean, I think that, that the people who, who can run that kind of food truck operation really have something going. Exactly. I mean, the, these, these food truck vendors, I, I know all of them. But I, when I watched them conduct business, they got it down to an art, man. Yeah. Uh, they just pull in there, get out the generators, crank everything up, cook food, and the lines start coming. Yeah. So watching them operate, they, they understand the requirements, they understand the operation, so they're, they got yeah, it down they to got a it down. Yeah. Those They're like little mobile fast food restaurants, man, and they, without that fast food taste. And, you know, and it's good because now we have real life barbecue vendors, mm -hmm. then we have the food trucks, which they complement each other. Mm -hmm. And yeah, well, you know, the Tumon Night Market on a Saturday night is just one of many things that you can do in Guam. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the entertainment scene, I wanted to pick your brain about that. The entertainment scene on Guam is really, really mature. Yes. Developed. And, yes. and uh, the number of artists that are able to come out, there's no shortage of gigs for the number of artists, it seems. Yes. Right? It's exactly. You know, a lot of these, these new, young, talented bands that, that, that are here now, Mm -hmm. They're all really excited to play somewhere. Yeah. So they're out looking for gigs, like going to place. Hey, you need me to play? I can play. You know, and, and they 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 be you know they're very affordable. Yeah. A lot of them just want to get their name out there, right? So they can set up for other gigs. So, yes, there is a lot of talent. And I'll tell you, you like you said it, Patty. It matured. Mm -hmm. The music 10, 15 years ago, compared to these young, talented people playing, man, yeah. it's, it's amazing. How, how well, far we've we've well just even the ability to have that many venues that they can actually hire these bands to come and and play I mean there's a, a lot about everybody is want is in search of some kind of live music that's the attraction right yeah live music is always the best because you can see it you can feel it you're there and you can really connect with the people that are performing mm -hmm. you know, a good example is um you know our buddies Jesse and Ruby yeah you know so enjoyable to watch and they connect really well with the crowd so that is a plus well they're a long they you know they got a long-standing gig down there at the outrigger right. they're still there too yes, right they are. Yes. if you want to know where ruby and uh ruby and jesse are playing uh, you don't really have to think twice because you always know they're always going to be in the same place and, and, and i'm honored because every now and then they call me down to come get yeah, them because water you, did you get, <laughs> didn't you get your start over there though yes I, I i started there in 2002 with my old partner from those two guys dennis yeah nakamoto and we were there from 2002 to 2007. And then Dennis had other endeavors. Mm -hmm. and so I asked Justin Ruby to come from, which was formerly Sam Choi's, now Seagirls, mm -hmm. if they would like to come over and join up with me. And they actually came over. I was, I was honored to, to, to have them come over. And you know, I'm playing with Justin Ruby. And then a few years went by, and I, I went in a different direction. So I uh, kind of passed over the torch to them and said, hey, man, you're doing uh, so really well, the so regular, the, the this is your gig now. Yeah. I, what I like about that is that even kids actually come with their parents and they yes. sit in the lounge and they order something to right, eat and right. they've got something for everybody. Yeah. Play a lot of local music. Uh, but you're playing at Mescla? Mescla and Gania every Thursday. Yeah. Great place. Uh, my good buddy Peter Duenas, um, we worked out a nice arrangement down there. and I love playing there. Nice, intimate crowd, yeah. good food, good local food. A lot of tourists are making their way down there now. I'm seeing an I've increase. I've seen a lot of that. You yeah. know, I've seen a lot of that. I've also seen a lot of tourists that are walking around dragging suitcases. <laughs> you know I mean? So they're like, I they're, don't know. They're, yeah, their they're, they're, they're accommodations are, are everywhere. Uh, whether they're, the, the, you know, I don't know, whatever. There's a, there's a whole controversy about that. But nonetheless, uh, you have a, a, a lot more tourists that are trying to do outside of, of the tours and that sort of thing these yes you know what uh, there's been an increase with internet travelers you know how before they used to book their flights and their the whole tour with the tour agent yeah. now they can do it online by themselves they can dictate you know they can look for better prices and they can package things themselves yeah so a lot of them are doing that they're finding their own rooms yeah they're finding their, their way here independent of the right. operators and then when they get to guam they're not bound to the typical tour agent thing where they have to get in the lobby mm -hmm. at when they arrive and get the briefing and then tell them where to go and then they get shuffled here and there yeah these individual travelers now are are, are demonstrating more of freedom a, and independence a, a want to yeah. just have that right to have yeah. that independence and to to do what they want to do without being told what to yeah. do yeah 
Well, I tell you, the two-mom night market was a good idea when we first heard about it. It's good to see that there's another activity that people can uh, go to and participate in and not necessarily have to be a tourist. Right, right. Because you, I think a lot of people go, oh, gosh, a two-mom is going to be, it's going to cost me a lot of money. Uh, this is not that place. Exactly. You know, and it's, it's affordable. It's accessible in Tumon. And the great thing about it, right, is, is I'm just really pleased to see that there's more locals involved in Tumon Bay now. You know, and I, I got to thank uh, people like um, that understand that concept, like Autospot. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I spoke to um, Donna Kanata and um, Derek and Vince Moffness and about supporting the night market. And in a heartbeat, they jumped on board and said, you know, what? we understand, you know, what a local business is here on Guam. We understand that and what it takes to, do, to be one, and we want to support you. So, you know, I want to thank Autospot for, Guam Autospot for, for jumping on board and you're going to expect to see some really good car shows down there mixed with the night market. So, Patty, here's the thing. The night market won't only be a night market. The night market is going to be the venue. What I have planned to, to, uh, to make this a little bit different is we're going to keep the night market, the two-month night market, as the venue and wrap around multiple events. So, for example, what's in the planning right now is, is there's going to be a New Year's fireworks show. Mm -hmm. So the night market will be, the two-month night market will be the actual venue and the concert will be, there'll be reggae music in the park, there'll be fireworks, and there'll be the night market all wrapped into one event. So you're going to see a multiple event. Happening. Right. December 31st. And we're going to connect that with the seafood bash. So you can, our vendors will be bringing seafood that night. And so you're going to see three multiple events, four sometimes four wrapped into one concept. So Well, that's during that's the difference. holidays, but you yeah. want to go to the night markets. It's every Saturday at uh, in the parking lot of right. uh, Epal Beach in, in Tumon. Thank you, my friend, for you, stopping by yeah. and helping me eat all this food. Oh, eating is my game, man. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Something to Talk About. Thanks for joining us.